Shopping with interest is a great activity to do with your students to drive home the importance of paying off your credit card balance in full and not making just minimum payments on that debt. I'm in the Types of Credit um, unit on the NGPF website, and the uh, activity that I'm going to give you some teacher tips on is um, the Calculate Shopping with Interest activity. So I actually used this activity today with my students for the first time, and I thought I would hop on and give you some tips as to how it went and maybe help you in implementing it in your classroom with your students. We are just now diving into our credit unit. So, so far students have learned the difference between installment debt and revolving debt. And now we're diving into more about revolving debt and credit cards. So we learned a bit about how credit cards work and then that you have the option to make minimum payments on a credit card and how that can get you into a cycle of debt on that revolving line of credit. While we were talking about just some preliminary information, I showed them an awesome video, which is in the NGPF video library, that I would highly recommend showing before doing this activity. Um, I think it works really well. So in that video library, um, under their resources, it's one of their top pick videos, and it is this one, which is Credit Card Debt Explained. Um, if you've never seen this video, they show you in the video how minimum payments just like kind of snowball into credit card debt when you're only making those minimum payments and they use the analogy with water in the video so I think it's a really helpful one to use before you use the act or um, do the activity shopping with interest so in the activity what students are able to do is they're able to look at that even small purchases on a credit card can accumulate a lot of interest and a lot of debt if you're only making minimum payments on that credit card so in the activity, um, the activity is pretty self-explanatory. The most help I had to give students was when using the online calculator. So students may need a traditional calculator just to do some simple kind of calculating, but then they're also using an online calculator to help with the assignment. So what they are assuming is that their credit card has an APR of 19.9%, and they are also assuming that their minimum payment, like when they're making the minimum payments, it is 3% of the starting balance. So what I did to get students started and to help them in understanding how the calculator works is um, I did questions one, two, and three with them, and then I set them free to do the rest of the activity. So um, as you can see, my maybe behind me, my room is in like more table groups, so they worked with their table groups, and then. Um, I have a classroom set of Chromebooks, so the students were able to access the, the credit card calculator on their Chromebook, and I ended up printing this as like a worksheet because I thought it was helpful to be able to manipulate the calculator on the Chromebook and then be able to write on their paper at the same time. So I used it as a printed activity. I also customized this assignment a little bit, which I'll show you in just a second. So I started with doing um, the first questions with them as far as if your balance was $1,275 and you ended up paying it off in full before the due date how much interest would you pay and they end up paying nothing in interest and then kind of going down to number three where a new video game comes out and you put the $60 video game on your credit card but you can't afford to pay the whole thing off. So what would it look like if you paid just a minimum payment? So I will work through number three with them, or I did today, and it was helpful in learning how the um, uh, calculator online works. So um, they will want to open up this calculator, and starting with question number three, they will use it. And if they only made the minimum payment, what would that look like? Well, in the top it said it was 3%, so 60 times 3% means I'm gonna make a minimum payment of $1.80. And then they'll hop on in question B and use the calculator to figure out how much interest they would pay if they just paid the minimum payment every single month. And here's where you might have to help and clarify a little bit with students on how to use the calculator. In this example, the balance was $60. The interest rate was 19.9% zero monthly charges and then by default this 12 months comes up but you're gonna have them change that to zero and instead they are gonna make a monthly payment of that minimum payment which was a dollar eighty and then once they plug that in the sixty dollar charge at a nineteen point nine percent APR paying only that minimum payment every month when you calculate it 
it tells you that it would take you 49 months to pay off that $60 purchase and you would pay an extra $28.07 in interest. So that will help them in answering questions um, B and C. After I do that with them, because I think the most confusion when I worked with students was that we're using the calculator and changing some of those variables. I then changed number four a little bit. Um, I'm going to pop to mine. And instead of that, mine's actually number three on my sheet, is instead of having them buy a TV, which was in the original NGPF activity, I had them buy a MacBook Pro. Because that just seems to be popular with students right now. I want a MacBook. I want a laptop. I want to buy that. I teach mostly 12th graders, so they're thinking ahead to college and they want to get you know, a new laptop. So I just changed it a bit, and that also inflated the price of the item. But they would do the same thing, whether you keep it as the TV, which is in the original document. I just changed the TV to now a MacBook. And plugging it in with the same idea of now you can't afford it, so you're paying minimum payments, how long would it take to pay off? what would be the interest that you would pay, and then how much would that purchase cost you in total. It was really eye-opening for students in doing the activity. The other thing I added into this was another little sub-question here, and I put in there that instead of making the minimum payment, what if you threw a fixed $100 at it instead? You can't afford to pay it off, you know paying the minimum payment is a bad idea, but you paid $100, a little more. How much time would that save you? How much interest would that save you? And I added that component into the existing activity, which is why I like NGPF curriculum so much. You can customize their activities however you want to, to use in your classroom. After that, down here at the bottom, this section, they can go and find like a new outfit, a prom um, attire. They can find anything less than 100 bucks and over 500. Um, you might want them to provide links or more detail as to what it is. And they use the same concept of if you just made a minimum payment, how long would it take to pay off? And then there's some reflection questions at the bottom. Again, I printed this. I thought it was easier to do on the printed and then use the online calculator. Students were, it was an eye-opening activity for students. I used it for the first time with them today, and they were surprised how much extra money they would pay by just making the minimum payments. Um, Lastly, I should tell you that this activity, I customized it a little bit, but I would say it will take about a half an hour for your students to do, particularly if you leave all of these research elements in it. It might even extend a little longer where they're finding something they actually want to purchase and then looking at how it would be impacted um, as far as just making the minimum payment.